Once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children of all ages, welcome back to the Prince of Investment coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful city and state of Denver, Colorado via Honolulu, Hawaii. If you guys and girls haven't done so already, go ahead and make sure you hit that like, subscribe, comment and share button because we got a very, very great episode coming to you today. So we have a very great guest uh, that you can see already in the description box in the title today. We got Miss Taja Simpson, who is breaking out in Hollywood, who I love her story because she left Louisiana, went to LA, you know, is making all type of moves. I, I think she has 50 films to her credit. She became an author. She started her own business. She got her own uh, beauty line, all these things. But we're bringing her today. To, I want to sit down and talk to her to see how did she do it? How did she make that transaction? Because there's so many people that want to go to Hollywood and become an actor, but you know, that's a hard role. Also, on top, on top of that, being this, it's the Prince of Investment, we know we're going to ask her, hey, you're making money now, you're in these roles, you're in the movies, how does the actor budget their money? What are you What are you doing? What are you looking to do? All those things like that, the do's and don'ts. We got crypto, we got real estate, we got stocks, we got business. What is she doing? We already know she's an entrepreneur, but you guys and girls stay tuned. But without any further ado, let me introduce my guest because... I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely know you guys and girls don't have a lot of time, so we're going to get into it. Say, give a nice round round of applause. I'm getting my words tripped up today. To our guest, Miss Taja Simpson, how you doing today? <laughs> I'm great. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. This is my first investor show, so I'm like, let's talk business, baby. Let's okay. go. <laughs> okay. All right. So you're in L.A. right now, right? Yes. And you're originally from Louisiana. The real LA, yes. <laughs> the, real, <laughs> the real, okay. The yeah. real, the real LA. Now, how did you make that transition? You know, coming up, you know, I know, you know, reading your story, reading your past, you had some struggles in childhood. You know, being a, a dark skinned girl in the South and being picked at and called names and things like that. Me originally, I'm from small town Waynesboro, Georgia, and I'm dark skinned as well. So I've had it as well. I heard all the jokes and things like that. So the things about it is, how did you take that and you know, from going to graduating high school, graduating college, and making the move? to Hollywood to become an actor? Because we hear so many people want to break into entertainment and here you are actually doing it. Can you break that down? What is the secret to success that you got there? Ooh, that's a loaded question. How did you do it from LA to LA? Got it, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Interesting, so it took a lot of self-love, I would say. I guess if I can kind of like bring that all together really quickly. Yes, I had some really humble beginnings. Yes, I was discriminated against and bullied a lot for being a dark-skinned woman. Um, and from my family to people I grew up with, to people that was around me in schools and everywhere I went, it was made to feel less than because of what I look like. So it took a long time to really be able to get over that, to get to a space to where I would really believe in myself. But there was this little still small voice in me that was like, hey, you should try your hand at acting. It was like sitting on my shoulder, like, hey, hey, you should do this. And after I graduated college with a degree in um, broadcast journalism and mass communication is when I finally was like, okay, let me try my hand at this and see. When I was a kid, I would play pretend with cousins and we would watch a movie. And my favorite movie was The Last Dragon, Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon, Shogun. Mm -hmm. Yes, I still know all the, all the lines. <laughs> Who's the master? Shogun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So we would watch the movies and we would learn all the lines and get up and act it out. But my parents didn't know anything about acting. I didn't know anything about acting to really cultivate that skill set. So when I graduated college, it was like that little acting bug was still in me. And I decided to just take the leap. Now, I started in Houston, Texas. I left Lake Charles, Louisiana. I moved to Houston, Texas. And I started, uh, I was trying to get a, a, a job in, in news, but I didn't have enough experience. So nobody would hire me. So I was sending out all these resume tapes and people were like, you're so good. I need you to have experience. And I'm like, well, how do I get experience if you don't give me a chance? Mm, is that. <laughs> Just like acting, you know, they're like, what is, what's your pedigree? What's your credits? I don't have any. Can you give, can you give me a shot? Um, Anyway, started with that. And then I started doing, um, I was a loan officer. And that's where I really learned to wow. love and learn about money and how to do what to do with money. And I would, you know, I had to do all these different, you know, loans and bills and things like that. And I said, okay, 
I would take these documents that people would give me and help these people get into a home. And I learned so much about how people, what they were doing with their money, the lack thereof, how they didn't know how to save it, what to do with it. And that was my first introduction was when I graduated college of, oh, okay, I don't want to be like this person. I'm going to be more like that person, right? So then I started studying a little bit more about money and what that meant, how to make money work for you, not just work for money per se. Um, and then I tried my hand at acting and I got into like um, an acting workshop and I ended up winning three awards. So that was like my first step. And from there, I was like, well, maybe I should go to LA because when I was seven years old, I came to LA and I went to Disneyland and I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was like, that's where I always wanted to live. And so I tried my hand. And when I got here, there was, at the time, they were doing like agent workshops. And so that means you sign up, you pay some money, you get in front of an agent, you would prepare your monologue, and you had like two minutes in a room with this guy or gal, right? And I did that. And out of all, it was like 53 people. I was the only person they wanted to sign. Mm. So that was my journey from Lake Charles, Louisiana to Houston, Texas, yes. and then trying my hand and in, in, in LA. And honestly, I just took the leap because it was something I wanted to do. But I knew I needed to get my degree first. Like I'm from the South. So my parents, my parents was like, so that sounds good, but I'm gonna need you to get your degree. So <laughs> I did that first, kind of it feels like for your parents. And then from there, that's when I was ready to really try it as well. And I did and learned a lot and then cut to here I am. So that's that's how it started. Awesome. Well, that's pretty cool because, you know, talking about how you went from <clears throat> trying to get your break, going into Houston, Texas, and then just going in with the agency. So when most people hear about, you know, you go to Hollywood, they say you have so many, you know, of course, you know, um, I don't have a clue about Hollywood from what I see. Right. Many people say, hey, when you go in, these agents, they take advantage of you. They say, hey, pay me this money and I'm gonna give you this look and things like that. How did you filter out and know that, hey, I can pay this agent and it's legitimate to be able to break out in front of those 53 people? Well, and, and yes, there are agents, there are people, there are businesses that try to you know get money out of people from their from their dream for sure but there's one thing i learned very early on and one thing that i coach and teach all of my actors or anyone that asks me about acting is you don't pay to act acting pays you you pay your agent or representation a 10 percent percentage right so they make money when you make money you shouldn't be paying them before you make money. Mm. So because I understood that and knew that, I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense. Now I just have to get somebody on my team who believes in me, understands my talent, know my type, get me in front of casting people so that I can book jobs and go, you know, go from there. So when I signed up for this, the reason you had to pay money, it was just for the agency that was putting it on. They still had to like rent a space. They had to, I mean, it was like $10 or $15. It wasn't anything like hundreds of dollars like you had to sign up and that 10 15 dollars let us know okay you're going to show up <laughs> you know what i mean um and so you pay this little nominal fee and then yes you get in front of the person and you know you're paying for to get yourself i guess some time of that per that person's time in a sense but also the agency just putting it on they're paying to put it on so we're essentially i guess offsetting that cost so it wasn't a thing of like oh i paid thousands of dollars and blah 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 no it, i think it was like 15 bucks or something like that Okay. Now yeah. you brought us some very uh, interesting there. You said you teach actors. Mm -hmm. well, let's talk about the working, uh, the working actors Academy. Yeah. Right? So what is the working actors Academy? And what is that all about? Tell us about that. What do you do with that? Yeah. So, you know, that was birth because the more I was booking, more people would ask me, how do I become an actor? How do I, where do I start? What do I need to do? And all these great things. And so I was helping so many different people in a one-on-one -on -one basis, but then the more I would get busy, the less time I had. And so I ended up developing the book first. I did um, Cracking the Acting Code. And then from there, it kind of parlayed into the birth of the Working Actors Academy, which is an online program, the workingactorsacademy.com. It's an online program that people can take it at their leisure. And it's going to give you all the skill set and the tools that you need to be a working actor from the business aspect of it. Now, we can be career students. We can go to school for years and never book a job. I know plenty of people that do that. And that's great. But if you don't have the skill set to audition, if you don't have the skill set to be a do a self tape, if you don't have the skill set to understand the ins and out of this business, unfortunately, you 
if you don't have a good audition, you'll never book the job. But maybe if they somebody gave you one, maybe you'll be phenomenal. We don't know because you don't know what to do. So the Working Actors Academy is going to help you understand and learn the different styles and tones of acting. Know about your type. That's very important as an actor to understand and know your type. Um, it's going to help you get your resume, your reel, your headshot, all that stuff together. It's going to help you get an agent and a manager. It's going to help you with the online tools that you need. It's going to help you be able to walk into your purpose, into your dream, if this is something that you really want to do. This isn't a space that you don't have to do any work. This, no, acting, you have to put work in. You have to understand and know your character just as well as you know yourself. But because I've done the work, I've learned so much being here for so long, I'm now, this is my way of kind of giving back and in a sense is like, okay, there's nothing like this in the industry that can help you from a business standpoint, everything that when I, when I did my beta testing and I sent it out to my casting people and all of my different industry professionals, people were like, wow, no one's done this. I know. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be able to fill a void in the industry as well to help as many people as possible. And the best way I could do that is make an online program, be able to take it at their leisure, go at their own pace so that they can put the work in to be successful. So that is the Working Actors Academy. Okay. Now you you said something that was very key that I know I said this like 10 times, okay. but- I mean, I'm doing good. I'm saying things uh, that are very key. That are very key. <laughs> I'm picking up on like, okay. Now, when you look at an actor, they say, hey, I'm gonna go to uh, LA. I'm gonna go to Hollywood and make it, you know, whatever. And I'm gonna put in the reels and I'm gonna put in the work. How do they generate money in the amateur stage? Like, how do, how, how do I stay alive? You know, LA is not cheap. The second thing, I want to get into the business side, right? Well, no, I'm, let's go with that question. Then we'll talk about the business side. Like, how does the actor themselves, like, keep themselves afloat or even make it? You know, things like that. Well, as far as work, yeah, you have to find that flexible job. For me, it was promotions. So I worked, I was a promo girl for many years. And then from there, I worked my way up and became a brand manager for multiple brands and things like that. But I worked a job in marketing that would allow me, I call it my waitress job because most, you know, actors are have, or have a waiter or waitress job. Um, but it's something that will give you the flexibility that will allow you to be available for auditions. Now, the industry has shifted. Back then we were, I feel like I'm saying this was like two years ago. Back then we did auditions in the room, you know. <laughs> This is pre-COVID. You would go into a casting room and do an audition, which is like, what, a year and a half ago now or two years now? And now self-tapes is the way to go. So you can have almost any kind of job you want now if you're trying to pursue acting because with a self-tape audition, you you will get the self-tape audition. You will give you all the information and tell you, hey, it's due in two days or hey, it's due in three days or whatever. And you just have to carve out time and space in your own life to film the audition of yourself you know you do it on your own it's a self-tape instead of going into a room so now oh. it's very different the industry isn't so you have to be at an appointment at this time in la with traffic across the other side of the town other side of t other side of the city with traffic trying to get their own time you do it at your leisure okay so now it's, it's a lot easier to be able to break into the industry and have the job that you want to do you can work a nine to five and then say okay when i get off from this i'm going to study and record my self-tape because you're going to do it in your home. Nice. Mm -hmm. Now, once you have started to book jobs, mm -hmm. so as an actor, you just have to go from role to role, like with your income coming in sporadic like that. Like, mm -hmm. how do you, you know, buy a house and, you know, make investments and things like that when it's like, hey, I got this role, then I don't know when the next role is coming and I got to wait to the, you know, wait to the agency call. Do you just wait on the agency to call to see when your money's going to come in? Or uh, do you wait, to, you know, how does that, how does that work on the financial side of like now that you've elevated and you're getting roles and you're getting cast? Mm -hmm. Great question. No, you cannot wait for the agency to call for mm -hmm. whenever that audition is going to be. You have to create your own lane. So we live in the industry now where you can create a show, you can get with some friends, you can write a show, put it up on YouTube, you can do whatever to get yourself out there. Um, you can do a short film, you can get you can get that picked up for on a myriad of different platforms now. They pay you for that, they need content, you know. So there's so many different things that you can do now. When I was coming up in this industry, I had my marketing job, so that was the offset and how I was able to make ends meet, live, eat, sleep, breathe, because there was plenty of times that when I first started, I was just a telemarketer trying to be an actor. That was no money. <laughs> so, um, and I was trying to do my best with not not going back home. But the big goal when you get here is like, okay, I made it here. I want to stay. I don't want it to eat me up. 
and I have to go back home because I can't afford it because it is expensive to be here. So in the in the midst of those times, what I was doing, working my job and then getting my auditions, I was also preparing for the next audition. I would go to sites like showfacts.com. I would go to LA Casting or Now Casting, and I would um, download different sides from different shows, different commercials, different films, and I would study. That's one thing that I noticed that most actors don't do is that if they don't have an audition, if they haven't booked a job, they're not at home studying. Well, I would study, I would prepare. So then I would film myself. I would take that same audition and I would put my camera up and I'd film myself so I can see what I'm doing. Like what, am, what is the casting director seeing in me that I'm doing? And I would notice little quirks about myself. I would notice things that I should not be doing because once you get into the room, they don't know that if you could just keep scratching that you had something on your back, they think that's a character choice. What is she, why is she fidgeting so much? You know, like, what is she doing? Um, and if I didn't have a video recorder, I would use an audio recorder. And all of our phones have it now because I used to speak really, really fast growing up and I had to learn to slow down. Like right now, I feel like I'm talking so slow, <laughs> but I had to learn to do that. that. That was practice make perfect. When my background came from, you know, athletics and I played a bunch of different sports. And so in order to be great at anything, you had to put forth the effort. So that's what I would do in between. So whenever I did get the opportunity that would come from my agency and they would send me an audition, I made sure that that wasn't the first time I did that audition was not in the room. It was at home multiple times. I studied it, I saw it, I listened to it. Okay, boom, I'm ready. Now I'm so prepared when I go into the room, come on, man, I'm ready. Put me mm. in the coach. Hey man, I'm ready. Cat, I'm ready. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> but I put the work in. So that's what actors would have to do to really go into the room and really set themselves apart. You can't go into, they'll tell you, yeah, you can go into the room with the papers in your hand, meaning your sides that you had to prepare. But you got to understand, you're going up against people who've been on television. Mm. So if you go up against me and I'm on TV, I'm on Tyler Perry show and we do 100 pages a day and we go into this audition, I got five pages. You think I'm walking in with papers in my hand? No. <laughs> wow. No. Yeah. Well, five pages. You can remember five. Well, you know what? Before oh. we get into that, Taj, yeah. Taj, okay. that <laughs> we got to take a quick break. And I mean, okay. a very quick break. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to be back. And when we come back, we're going to talk more with Miss Taja. And we're going to talk about her entrepreneurship, her investing, all those good things like that. So y'all stay tuned. Don't move a muscle. We'll be right here, right back with the Prince of Investment. Aloha, I'm Christine Linders, physical therapist and board certified orthopedic clinical specialist. And I am the host of Movement Matters, a show that is designed to bring you the best physical therapy tips and exercises so that you can have your best body and do all the things that you love. You can watch my show every other Tuesday at 11 a.m. on thinktechhawaii.com where I show you instructional videos from the top of your head to the bottom of your toes to get your body feeling its best. Remember, life is better when you listen to your physical therapist. I'll see you on Tuesday. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children of all ages, we are now back here with Miss Taja Smith Simpson. What does it say, Smith Simpson? live she was earlier talking about that path that she took from louisiana to houston to hollywood to landing roles with uh tyler perry i can't even think of all the shows greek to you know it's just a long list right uh, she's doing a thing she's one of the few that's gotten to hollywood and been able to do things and be consistently booked and things like that but she made a quick turn i won't say it's a quick turn but she made a turn she also has her own beauty line right she started her own makeup line you know she wrote her own book she got her own academy what is changing her or what makes her want to get into or get behind if even she's hadn't gotten behind the camera already uh was my online valentine she produced her own uh movie already she talked about writing the short strips but what got you into entrepreneurship some people look at it and say, do I have to put up my own money do you borrow money do you get investors how does Taja do it? Great, great question. Okay, so where do I start in that question? Mm -hmm. 
Let's see. I wanted to get into entrepreneurship because I knew once I started making money, like I've always believed in myself. So even when I didn't have money to invest for real, I was, my mom would always say, well, when you get paid, you got to pay, you need to give yourself 10%. You want to pay your tithe, praise the Lord. And 10%. you want to pay yourself your 10%, you know? So <laughs> that's yeah. how I first started investing in myself. Mm-hmm. Um, well, sometimes that 10% was tough. I didn't have it. I needed it for gas. I needed it to eat. I needed things like that. So I would study about what to do with my money. So then when I knew when money was coming, because I always believed that it would, I would know what to do. And entrepreneurship was the way to go, whether it was real estate, owning, you know, property and stuff like that, or whether it was also the, the businesses that I have. I wanted to take the money that I was making and pour into a business so that I can build it from the ground up, make it successful, and then that will then turn around and give me passive income. Because you're right, this industry can, it can be very fickle. It can it, it ebbs and flows. It goes ups and down. You may make a lot of money this year and not so much next year. But what are you going to do to sustain yourself? How are you going to buy that home? How are you going to support your family? How are you going to do these things and dreams and goals? I have a desire to live nice. I mean, what's wrong with that? But I also want to live in my passion. My passion, I also believe, is my purpose. I worked in uh, for, for West Angeles Church of God in Christ for 12 years over the theater program. So I've I've tied my talent, if you will. You know what I mean? Like I've given so much of this, but it also gives so much back to me. So that's what made me want to get into entrepreneurship is because I wanted to set myself up for, finan- for financial greatness, if you will. Like the arts is great and I love it, but I still want to be able to eat. Amen. Everybody say eat. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's what made me get into it. And okay. so I wanted to pick things that I was passionate about that I knew that I could get behind, that I could speak on. And that's why the book came, which was the first one was Cracking the Acting Code, Boom, a Practical oh. Step-by-Step Guide to Becoming a Professional Actor. From there, that birth, you know, the Working Actors Academy. I got asked, the, I, I knew that there was a need. People were asking me so much. So I was like, let me create a platform their actors can go and create a community of people where they can then get all the information that they need and then turn around and be successful. Once they apply that to their life, they can turn around and be successful. Um, I actually didn't have an investor for Cracking the Acting Code, nor, um, well, Cracking the Acting Code was a book is different. You can just kind of pour that. You can just kind of do that on your own, really. But the Working Actors Academy started off being something a lot smaller, and then it ended up building and building and building and growing to this much bigger thing. I had no idea it was going to build to be so big. And so there was a part of me that was like, whoa, glory, this is a, uh, you sure you're trying to do this for the world, for people, because um, you put some money into this. But it was like sporadically here and there, here and there as it was growing. And then when we launched and we launched in um, July of last year and everybody was signing up and people were doing, I was like, oh, praise God. I mean, you told me to do it. I mean, I was just being obedient, you know. <laughs> So, you know, so that made sense for me. So I was like, okay, um, the lipstick collection actually was birthed, Tajavi's, you know, Tajavi collections. That was birthed because that was the first venture that I wanted to branch out in. I had a makeup, um, a makeup artist contact me and she was a very good friend of mine. And she was like, why don't we partner on a collection together? And I was like, oh, okay, great. This was right after I did season one of the Oval and we go, we're getting ready to go back for season two. And I'd launch it in February of 2020 and then COVID hits. And I'm like, uh, wow. Really? Right. So I was one of the businesses that, and then the lipstick, I, one of them, which is my favorite color, which is triple threat, which is what I'm wearing right now. Can mm-hmm. only get, when COVID happens, there's so many different, you know, ingredients and things like that. Cause it was mm-hmm. a vegan product. It was all these different things, but we couldn't get some certain colors. And the company that I work with, like they had to, they almost lost, I think like 30 different colors of their lipstick, which is a lot. And that was one of my colors. And so I sold out of the other two. And so then I was in a crossroad of, what well, do I want to continue with this company, find another company? So I stayed with them until now, but now I'm in looking to partner with another company so that I can build it and make it even better with the colors that look good on me. Now that's the thing. Every color mm-hmm. that I have has to look good on brown skin. Because for so long, I didn't wear lipstick because I was always told I was too dark, so I would never wear it. I believed in what other people were saying about me. The moment I tried it, liked it, and was like, wow, other people's opinion of you does not have to be your reality. Mm, that's a <laughs> word. Turn to your neighbor and say, that's a word. That's a word. <laughs> <laughs> so, so from there, I was like, I can't let that stop me. That was my first, you know, initial investment. That was that I would say, honestly, it was a failed business. It did not go like I wanted it to go, but because mm. of COVID, 
but it, it, it did not reach the level of success that I thought it was going to. Um, but then I did the Working Actors Academy. And now since then, I've now done um, Taj Hair Growth Stimulant. Um, and this is an all natural hair growth product that's for literally anyone anyone from hair from hair from 1a super fine to 4c super coarse thick beautiful coily hair um, it helps with shedding it helps with thinning it helps with male pattern baldness it helps with alopecia if you literally want to have beautiful healthy hair then you mm -hmm. need to have hair growth you saw how i did that right I there see that. <laughs> So that's what made me want to get into entrepreneurship is to, I wanted to be successful. I wanted to build brands. I wanted to build businesses, businesses, you know, the people that I admire are like, you know, Diddy and Jay-Z and Beyonce, a lot of musicians, but I see that their humble beginnings and what they built to, and they poured into themselves, they believed in themselves and they built something. And I'm like, yes. well, if, it, if it's been done, it can be done again. So that's what I'm doing. Now, glad you said that. Now let's switch it up for a second. Yes. Right? Yeah. Kind of touched on that a little bit again. Uh -huh. So with all this going on in the world, you're seeing this year, real, you know, COVID came through, pandemic happened. We're looking at real estate hits an all-time high, stocks hit an all-time high. Now we got a new asset class called crypto. It's hitting an all-time high. Uh -huh. Now right we got now. NFTs coming. We got <laughs> NFTs, you know, which I kind of put in that crypto wagon yeah, yeah 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 how is taja investing mm -hmm. or what stocks. are your on it yep stocks real estate and nft and we okay have, i have crypto too i have crypto too so all of it um my business partner so another part of me <laughs> mm -hmm. that i feel like as, as i talk about it all at one time it's like girl you got a lot going on girl you doing your thing girl <laughs> <laughs> um, my, my best friend and business partner, his name is Michael McGowan, mm -hmm. um, both are from Lake Charles, Louisiana, and we have a studio together called Simpson and McGowan Studios. Mm -hmm. That's one of the ways that I was inspired by Tyler Perry, because after every production, when he would give a speech or something, he's like, you know, you look at me, you may say, wow, you know, he did all these things, but if I did it, you can too. He's right. So be, right before we had big storms and tornadoes and hurricanes that hit Lake Charles, right before that happened, we were there, we were, you know, scouting locations where we're going to build our brick and mortar studio. However, these storms months later hit two back to back. Wow. Um, completely destroyed the city. Um, so we were not able to build it there right now. But what we have been doing is doing documentaries and doing other productions and things like that. But because of that, we've created an NFT. We've been mm. investing the money that we had because we ended up getting an SBE loan. And we were like, okay, well, we need to make this money work for us. We wanted to use that. And we invested it not only in our company, but also in investment so that we can pay that loan back and then have more money to come. And so that during COVID, I learned even more so about that, of course, because the stocks were just moving and booming. It was like, whoa, 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 which one? I'm, hold on, wait, hold on, y'all. Let me get in on one, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, was, it was booming and it, and it did very well for us. And so we were, you know, excited about that and some of the choices that we made. But but now we're in a position where we're excited because we are our goal, which we had already had set up. We had met with the mayor. We met with the school board there in Lake Charles, Louisiana, to bring about, you know, not only a change, but work, you know, for the city. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make Lake Charles like a New Orleans or like an Atlanta that mm -hmm. they had to start somewhere because Louisiana also gives tax breaks for film, you know, for, for the film commission. So we wanted to be able to say, hey, we want to show you guys from a school standpoint how you can come out into this business and be successful and know all the things you need to know. So we developed a curriculum, we developed a program, um, as well as bringing jobs to the city. So that's the other part that we're in the process of doing. We were rolling it out, but then the storm said people are displaced, the city has to get back on its feet and all these things. So we're still in the midst of doing it as, as well as building the city back up, but that's the overall goal right now. That's the next goal I should say right now for Simpson and McGowan. So investing, stocks, real estate, you know, all of Business, it. You all, okay, got it. You got yeah. the entrepreneurship down. Yeah. She got the NFTs. Um, she got the NFT. She got the crypto. She got real estate. Yeah. She's in it all. So that's why I like to see, I like to see, you know, us as black people mm -hmm. get more into investing, you know, Absolutely. that's the whole premises of, you know, financial literacy, us getting into investing, us having these conversations, us and other people do it because 
me growing up from my little small town in Georgia, I thought that, hey, you know, you can't do that. You know, it's only for X, Y, Z. You must have this much capital, things like that. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. now it's the, you know, it's, a, uh, it's I have to go. You know, the show is coming to an end. But before we get out of here, I got to ask you the question, how, uh, what was your worst investments? And also, how can people follow you? Mm. Well, I would say my worst investment was starting my initial startup of Tajiri Collections, which was the lipstick, because I partnered with someone. Now, if had I done it on my own, it would have been done differently. But my that was my first time partnering with someone that, like my best friend, Mike, I've been on my whole life, right? That's one thing. But with her, I hadn't known her my whole life. So our business acumen was different. That was a big deal. That was a big deal that I had to learn. And very quickly and early on, we had to kind of part ways. And then COVID happened and I wasn't able to get the product that I needed to then even, you know, promote or sell to consumers. Mm-hmm. So that one is was my initial worst investment. And so now I have to vet people a whole lot more. <laughs> um, <laughs> mm-hmm. that, and you can follow me on all things social media. All things is at Taja V. Simpson. So TajaVSimpson.com. It's my hub site and it will lead you to all the different legs of everything I do from hair care to lipstick to both of the books and to the Working Actors Academy. How's Kim, what else what's this coming next for 2022? Lola, Lola 2. I did a boxing movie um, mm. that did very well. It came out on Tubi. It was the most watched movie on, on Tubi. And so mm. we filmed Lola 2 in July of last year and now it's coming out in March. Um, so I'm super excited about that. I play Lola. I, there it is. Hey, I am Lola. Um, and, and this one also has Carissa Shields. Um, yeah, Carissa Shields. Yeah, she's amazing. So mm-hmm. she's one. Of, she's my opponent in this. So I remember when I met her, I was like, "Hey, you know, I'm an actor. Don't hit my face for real." <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> <Please try. So, laughs> but it was a lot of fun doing that. And then January 13th, I actually just found out today. I'm also recurring on a sh- television show in All Black called A House Divided, and that comes out January 13th. Nice. Definitely. I, I love, you know, I never met her, had a conversation with uh, Kalisha. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just love her story. Just seeing her come from Flint, Michigan <laughs> and to come up, you know, as a female boxing, you know, so definitely shout out to her. Definitely shout out to the movie, uh, you know. Oh, and then also the Oval. Hi, you guys can watch me. Every oh, yeah. oh, oh, of course. Everybody knows. The, everybody the knows the Oval. The Oval is out with Tyler Perry. Yeah. She, you know, that's her she's doing big things and that things like that. I know people are going to know that people are going to see that and know you from the oval, yeah. but we just wanted to talk about those things that people probably wasn't going to know that was probably going to come up. So I got to ask you this question. Did you have fun? I did. Thank okay. You. Will you be back? Yes, I will. Yes, okay. I will. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you for coming on. Um, and ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children of all ages, it's that time again. Got to close out the show. Until the next video, podcast, book, cartoon, or whatever else crazy you see me doing around the globe, my name is Prince Dykes. This is the Prince of Investment. Peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.